Right, let's get started. So a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we are getting, so I'm sure if you've watched me over the years on Korean craft, you'll know that I love American craft cardstock. And it's not been easy to get hold of at the moment. But we found the factory that it comes out of. <laughs> so we are going to be bringing you from probably mid to the end of October, um, the same quality cardstock, same weight, which is great, but we're doing our slightly different in the fact that instead of buying spring, summer, autumn, winter, we're doing them in colour families. So you get eight tints, tones and shades of a colour family in a pack. So if you, like me, use loads of green, because I make loads of flowers, I run out of green all the time. And then I was having to buy a full pack just to get three sheets of the green. So we've done them in greens, neutrals, yellows, blues, pinks and reds and lilacs as well. So really nice. So keep an eye out for those on the um, website. By the time we come back to you next month, we're hoping that that will be in stock because that just makes me very happy just looking at that. Second bit of housekeeping is I have got you a code that is available for 48 hours. So until midnight on Thursday, it's Brother 10. And it gives you 10% discount off all Brother accessories on the website, which is great. Sorry. Oh, my God, my brain. It's been, it was a long day, alarm set off at half past four this morning. It's been a long day. Off the Highlight Crafts website. Okay, so highlightcrafts.com, type in Brother 10, it gives you 10% off your mats, your blades, any other Brother accessories that you might fancy popping in there. If you are a True Red Robins club member, you will then get your additional club membership 10% off as well, which is brilliant. So you might as well stock up. And I believe if you spend over £25 as a True Red Robins member, you get free P&P. So it's win-win all the way around, which is great. So... What I want to do in this class, so last month we did welding two shapes together to make a shaped card. What I want to teach you now is what I've just done with the SDX um, customers is teach you how to create an aperture card, both in a square card and also in a shaped card. And this will teach you how the machine sees things. And once you understand how it sees things, any hurdles that you may come across, you think, oh, OK, now I know why it won't do it. And now I know what I need to do to make it do it. And that's what I've kind of spent the last five, five and a half years, probably seven and a half years trying to work out, well, you know, how do I make it do what I want it to do? Because I'm not good at accepting no <laughs> as an answer. If it's like, no, I can't do that. Well, why not? Because I want to make I want to do it. I want to make it work. So this is what this education is all about. And it's not about selling you more stuff. Yes, we'll give you a discount code and that's great. It's about you getting your machine out of the box and using it to its full potential. Because you can go from making a card blank to making a big 3D project. And it's the same processes as whether you're making an aperture card or you're making a 3D model. It's the same process. Once you understand how the machine sees things, and how you get things lined up where you want them, it's easy. But it's daunting when you look when you see somebody like me on TV who's been doing this day in, day out for seven and a half years, and I'm doing going through it all. This is a great way of me of going right back to basics. So, what would I want to know when I first got it out of the box? So let's get started. So we're going to do a five and a half inch square card with a circle aperture in the front. OK, so we're going to go into our basic shapes and we're going to click on the square. Now, I'm going to set this on the mat and then we're going to resize it from there. You can resize it from here, but we did that last time. So I'm going to do this. So we're going to set and put that on the mat. I'm going to turn that buzzer off because it will drive some of you crazy. I actually quite like it. But I know it will drive some of you crazy. So I've now got my square on there and I can move that around nice and easily. So what we're going to do is resize it. So we're going to make it, first of all, five and a half inch square. OK, so all I need to do is press the plus, And because it is a square, this is our amount. Oh, now then, I've just remembered. See, this is me flipping back between one and the other. Can't make that bigger on a CM. 
without moving it away from the side. This is where I've got to remember what it was like using a sear machine. And I do use it quite often, but sometimes things like that I forget. So we'll take it up to five and a half inches. So that's going to be the back of our card. But now I want the front of my card. So there's no point me bringing two in and overlapping them and welding them because then I've got to resize it all again. So all I'm going to do is make it a rectangle. And the rectangle is going to be five and a half inches high by 11 wide because it's twice 5.5 inches. So to do that, I'm going down to this button here. And this button here is called Unlock Aspect Ratio. And I was like, what does that even mean? I read the book and went, I don't know what that means. What does it do? What it basically means is that line there is dividing or separating the height from the width. So as soon as I click on that, it turns purple. I can then change the width to 11. Let's move it again. Change that width to 11 without the height changing. Now, as soon as it hits the side of the mat, it will stop. So if it stops before it gets to 11, just move it over a little bit, nudge it over, and then continue. Okay, so I've now got my five and a half by 11 rectangle. So when I fold that in half, it'll be a perfect five and a half inch square card. So let's move that up there for now. Now I'll need a circle because I want to put a circle in the middle of the front of that card. So I'm going to show you why it doesn't work and then I'll show you how to make it work so you understand that process that you go through. So if I press OK now and we go to Add and we go back into our basic shapes and we click on the circle. I'm going to set that to three and a half inches so you can resize on here because then I will have a square which is five and a half inches. I'll have a three and a half inch circle in the middle which will give me an inch all the way around to of my the aperture creates. Okay so I'm going to make that three and a half And I find on the CM sometimes it's easier to resize here because you don't need to move the shape. You don't need to keep pulling it away from the edge. So I'm going to set that on the mat because there's nothing else I want to do to that right now. I just want to set that onto the mat. So we're going to set. We've now got our circle. Now, if I use my alignment function, I'm going to show you what happens. So I'm going to go into here, which accesses other screens. So I'm going to click on that. One red square means that one shape is selected. Multiple red squares means we're going to multiple select the shapes. We learned this last time, but it's worth just covering it again. So we're going to multiple select. This screen is really, really accurate when you, when you touch it. It picks up straight away. The SDX screen seems a little bit slower for some reason. Don't know. So I'm going to click everything on the mat. So this one here, is when you're just choosing part of the mat. And this is when you want all the shapes on the mat. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to press OK. Now I'm going to my directional arrow buttons here. So I'm going to click on that. And at the top here, you will have this function. This is your alignment function. If you have never ever upgraded your machine or updated, not upgraded, updated your machine, you won't have that symbol. So you need to go to Brother Solutions Centre UK. Make sure you put UK at the end because that's really important because the US machines are different to the UK ones. Andrew, will you put this in the chat, please? So Brother Solutions Centre UK. It will ask you to choose your machine because there's so machines, fax machines, printers, all sorts on there. So you choose your cutting machine. It will ask you for the model. So you tell it which one. Now, the CM machine, so say you've got the CM600, is actually called CM600DX. So don't be put off by the DX. That's its full name. If it's SDX, it will say SDX. If it's a CM, it'll say CM600DX. So it's the right model. And then it will talk you through that update process, okay? And then you will have this alignment function and the alignment function you will use a lot because it's much easier than trying to guess whereabouts the center is. However, 
it doesn't work for aperture cards. We have to put an extra step in. So let me show you why it doesn't work and then I'll show you how to make it work. So we've multiple selected bow shapes and we're gonna go into our alignment function. Wherever the straight line is in these boxes is where it will align those shapes to. So to the left, to the right, to the top, to the bottom, to the center vertically, and to the center horizontally. So if I'm trying to put that circle in the middle of there, it's in the middle of the rectangle, not in the middle of the front of the card. So we have to think about how we can get that circle into the middle of that rectangle, okay? So we need to think in shapes. So if I press okay, tap the screen to release the shapes, and move that circle down here. If I put that circle in the middle of a five and a half inch square first, and then align it to the right and the top, it's gonna move that square with that circle in to the correct position. Then I delete off that extra square and it leaves the circle bang in the middle of the front of that card. So that's what we're going to do. It's thinking about what do I need to add to that circle to make it fit perfectly in the middle of the front of that card. It's thinking like the machine thinks. So it's thinking in different shapes. How do I make it do that? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add, and we're going to go back in and choose our basic square again. And we're gonna make it five and a half inches here, because that's exactly the size of the front of the card. And we're gonna set it on the mat. So I've now got my square, and I've got my circle. So I want to put that in the middle of there, but not get this involved. So we go back to this little box here that opens up access other areas is what I call it. And we're going to multiple select. This time we're gonna do part of the mat because we don't want this rectangle involved yet. We need to do this bit first. So I'm gonna click on that and that opens up that screen with your drag arrows on. As soon as you move that arrow over one side of that rectangle, it can't see it as a shape anymore. So it completely ignores it. You don't have to pull it right down over the edge. You literally just need to block out one side. So it could be left, right, top, whichever way, but you just need to block that out. So when I then press OK, it just highlights those two. Okay. The other way you can do it is if we just tap off that and come out. You can go multiple select. If you do all of the map by mistake, you can then tap on that one and it will get rid of it. Either way, it doesn't really make any difference. So now I've got my circle and my square selected. So I'm gonna tell it that I've finished on this screen by pressing that blue box in the bottom right hand corner that we talked about last time. So we'll always say okay or set. I'm now gonna align that into the middle of there. So I'm going to go to my directional arrow buttons because we're moving. And I'm going to go to my alignment function and I'm going to align it centrally vertically and centrally horizontally. And that puts that circle bang in the middle of that square, okay? Now I'm going to press okay. And I'm going to keep going until I get to group, which is there. So now that circle is directly in front of, um, inside that, that circle. It's directly in the middle of that square. I have to think about my words at this time. Isn't it? So now what I want to do is put that up here. Now you can do two things. You can either drag that over there and push that up like that. And that will be bang in the middle. Let me just have a look at that square because it looks like it's changed size. Right, let me ungroup that. Tap, resize that square. How did I manage that? Because I've had one of those days, it's been a busy day. Right. So resize that. And then just to make sure, we're going to multiple select part of the mat, drag that over there. And we're going to just align it again. So directional arrows, align, center vertically, centrally horizontally, didn't move at all, which then tells me that when you're expanding something, it's not expanding from the top or from the outside edge. It's expanding from the center out because it's kept 
that correct ratio and it stayed in the middle of that square. So that's a good thing to know as well. So now I'm going to group that. And now we're going to put that in there. So if you move this right over as far as it will go, you can then literally drag that up there. Or you can use your alignment function. Because you might have something else on this mat. You might not be able to get to a corner. So we do exactly what we did before. We multiple select everything that's on the mat and we press OK. We go to those directional arrow buttons. And this time we're going to go to align and we're going to align it to the top and to the right hand side, which puts that perfectly in that place. Now, I'm going to press OK. I'm going to tap the screen to release those shapes because it, it wants to keep hold of them. When you tap the screen, it knows that it can let them go and it can make them separate again. But this circle is still grouped with that square. So I need to ungroup it and tap it like that. And now I've got, I can get rid of that square completely. So I'm just going to regroup that because I want to show you this. So if I see if this works, I've got my square selected. I'm going to multiple select part of the mat. And this time I'm going to drag it over that edge of the rectangle. So now it just picks up the square in the circle. OK, so you always have an edge that you can go over and that will give you what you need. So I'm just going to group this again because I want to duplicate it because I forgot. So I'm going to go into here. And in number, I'm going to put two. I'm going to move one of those down there. OK, and now I can ungroup that, tap the screen, and then I can put that square in the bin. And that circle is bang in the middle of the front of that card base. So now we know that we're going to get an, an accurate card base. But I don't want to cut this one out of the same card yet, so I'm going to show you something else. So I'm going to bring on a mat. And I am going to choose some of this lovely card. I can't tell you how excited I am about this coming in. I've got them like down to my last few sheets of American Crafts, which has made me feel very jittery. And then we found this and I was like, oh, this is just brilliant. And I always run out of certain colours and I'm always left with really bright, like fluorescent colours. And I'm like, no, I just want to buy it purples and pinks and greens and blues so that's what we've done and if you don't like it we can change it but I thought it was quite a nice way of buying it so loading your mat now this is important these rollers here at the sides take in your mat okay if you put that and I, you don't find this with the CM as much as you do with the SDX because the SDX has got bigger rollers and it's got a deeper a stronger blade it's more powerful so therefore, what it's doing, you can, you, there's nothing that you can cut on an SDX, I found, that you can't cut on a CM, okay? Because it's all about your blade depths. But your deep cut blade for your CM machine is very much like the SDX blade. And I find it's too strong for a lot of things. It puts too much force and too much, it pushes too hard. So I find that using the standard blade but cutting several times really works with grey board, things like that. Yes, it's a bit of a faff because you've got to take the blade out and adjust it, but you know what? It, it works. People say to me all the time, do I need to upgrade? No, you don't need to. You might want to, but you don't need to. There is nothing that you can't do with a CM machine and canvas workspace that you can do with an SDX. Nothing. So... It's, it works brilliantly. Loading your mats. I actually prefer the CM mats because you can load them from both ends. Whoever decided it was a good idea to put the hole in the bottom of the SDX mat, I don't know. But to hang your mats up, I'm like, no, I'd rather be able to load it from either end. Anyway, it is what it is. I, I've argued the toss. They're not having it, so I've just got to put up with it. But loading your mat, you need to keep hold of your mat as you load it because you don't want if I let go of that now, that side could just come out slightly. And then that roller there can't get that mat because it's not, it's not butted up to it. So this roller takes over and you end up loading your mat in like that. So just make sure that when you load your mat in, you keep hold of it here. You don't need to push it. You shouldn't be doing this and buckling, but just keep hold of it while you press the load button. 
And Betty, I heard you saying be at the beginning that this is noisy. Let me tell you, it's nowhere near as noisy as a cricket machine because I tried one of those and it literally sounded like a freight train was going through the living room. This is noisy if you've got an SDX and you've compared it. And when I, so the difference is if I walk out of my craft room at home, I can hear the machine in the, in the, at the back of the house. I can hear that it's cutting. The SDX, sometimes I even have to pop my head over when I'm in the same room. It is quieter. It's got a more powerful motor. But I have to say, personally, it doesn't bother me. But if it does, it's a reason to upgrade, but you don't need to. Right, so I want to just cut this. So what I'm going to do is go into my settings here and I'm going to change my cut area. So this little spanner, wherever there's a spanner, there's a toolbox behind it. So click it and it will open up different functions for you. So my cut area, I'm going to drag that up. So I'm making my cut area smaller and that's dragging over that extra square with a circle inside it. So it's eliminating it that way. So I'm going to press OK and now I'm going to ask it to cut. So I'm going to keep going until we get to, it tells me here, there is a pattern out of the effective area. The pattern cannot be cut or drawn. Are you okay to continue? Absolutely. So instead of having to save it and then recall it all, you can literally drag a box over it and it ignores it and it will just cut what it can see, which I think is brilliant. Especially if you've got lots of layers that you're building up that's a really great function to have because you can have them all on one mat and then just bring the next one up and the next one up and, and cut it that way. I think that's much, much easier. I think it's brilliant. So I'm going to press OK and then I'm going to press Cut. Now, going into my settings here, cut speed on five. Anybody who's ever seen me do a scanning cut show will know that my, my speed is always, always, always on full. It's never failed me in the 17 years that I've been using electronic cutting machines. And I'm not going to start changing it now. So the quicker the speed, the better the cut. So put it on full and you never need to think about that again. Your cut pressure is the force that the machine puts onto the blade to push it through the cardstock. Now, because we're using a lightweight cardstock, a 216 GSM, you don't need very much pressure on there at all, if any. So Amanda obviously is using this machine on a daily basis. She knows how old the blade is and she's chosen to put the cut pressure on one. So I'm gonna go with what she's, because she's been using it all day today. My blade depth is on five. And the really good way of finding out what you need your blade depth to be is to, so first of all, Tighten your blade housing as tight as it will go and make sure that that little line there above the number 12 is lined up perfectly above the number 12. Because if it's here, when it's tightened up, that's not giving you a true blade depth. So if it doesn't line up perfectly with that white line underneath the Brother logo to the number 12 there, take the label off and put it back on so it is. Because then you've got a true blade depth. And the higher the number, the further out of this unit, this blade appears. Okay, so I'm going to take it back to about five. I'm going to take a piece of my cardstock. And I'm going to put it up to that blade. And if I can see that blade above that cardstock, which I can, I know that blade is going to go through that card. If I'm a blade right down here, and you can hardly see it, and I put that against there, and it slides over the top, you know it's not going to cut through because this is your blade depth. This is how far down this unit starts, the blade starts before any pressure is put on it. And what I've learned with Brother is that it doesn't rely on the force of the pressure. It relies on the blade and the blades are really good. The more pressure you have on that isn't needed, the more it's going to cut into your mat. So you don't need a lot of pressure. So start even on zero with the new blade and start with a pressure with a blade depth of about four. I would rather you started lower and it didn't cut through and you had to go around and cut it again than start high and cut a hole in your mat, okay? Just forget what, if you've had a different machine before. So for example, when I got my first CM600 arrived through the post, like eight days before we launched it to the world, that was scary. 
Um, I put my pressure on five, my blade on five, my speed on five, because that's what I did on my cricket machine. And it cut a massive circle out the middle of my mat. I was like, okay, this is a different level of cutting now. Dropped my pressure down to one and it cut perfectly. That's when I knew it was a good machine because they weren't relying on that pressure forcing that blade through because the blades are good. So I'm just going to pop this into my housing and press that grey bar down. And now I've got my pressure and my speed where I want it to be. I'm just going to press cut. And then as soon as you this lights up, it's ready to go. If this isn't lit up and you press it, it will tell you that you haven't loaded your mat because that's the only reason why it wouldn't light up. So now we press start. It's telling me again that there's an effective pattern outside it and it won't it just check in again. And now it's going to go and cut that for me. And it's going to do the circle for me. Right, so always, always, always test to make sure that it's cut through before you unload the mat, because you can always put this back in place. But once you've done that, once you've um, unloaded it, chances of getting it back in the right place are very slim. So then I'm going to fold this over like this. I'm going to press that down like that. And we will come to putting score lines in things as we go through the whole process. But for now, I've got a perfect circle aperture in the middle of that card. OK, so that's how you create your aperture card. Then the fun begins. And this came about because one of the girls who used to work here um, sat with Stephanie one day and she said to her, right, if I want to, I've got my dies, my nesting dies, and I've cut a square and I've put a circle in the middle of it. And I now know that I need to use two dies up on my circle and two dies down on my square. But how do I make sure that they're dead central? And it's either drawing a cross on your mat and making sure everything's lined up. And she was like, right, but that's a bit of a faff and I want like three layers and, and it's just messing about. So she owned a scan and cup but didn't have it out of the box. Does that sound familiar? So I made her get it out of the box because I showed her this. And this for me is brilliant. So I'm going to get rid of the actual card shape. Now you can save it. So next time you want a circle aperture card, you've got it already done. So you're only ever doing that process once. So I'm going to put that in the bin because I don't need that anymore. I'm, I'm having to re-navigate where I am because the, the things are in different places on both machines. So I'm also going to put that in the bin as well. And we're going to work with this. OK, so it's grouped. Now, until I save that, I still have the option to ungroup it. Once I've saved it, I can't ungroup it when I recall it unless I take it into Canvas Workspace. So if you want to save something and you think you're going to want to change it going forward by, by ungrouping both of those shapes, save it as an ungroup shape. And then when you recall it back, you can group it then. But for now, I'm going to ungroup this. So I'm going to tap the screen, tap that to ungroup it, and then tap the screen to release the shapes. Now, if I try and get to that circle now, it won't let me. And this is one of the things that you need to understand. That doesn't see, the scan and cut doesn't see that shape the, we, the way we see it. We see it as a frame, a square with an aperture cut out of it. The machine sees it as a circle with a square sat on top of it, sees it as a pile. Now, there are several ways that we can make it see it differently. And one of them is by going into Canvas Workspace, which we're not going to do yet because we're not ready for that. But there is a way of doing it. But for now, to access the circle, you're using these buttons. So where you select is, these are your select arrows. So this moves from one shape to the next. You could have 50 shapes on here, and it would move through methodically each one. So if you're grouping something, let's say you've got a circle, a square, a rectangle, and an oval, and you want to resize them all in the, in the same ratio. I would align them all centrally, vertically, and centrally, horizontally, so they were a pile. And then I would group them and resize them and then ungroup them. But if I wanted to access one of those shapes and they're all on top of each other, you use these select arrows. So that's, that's what they're there for, okay? 
So when we're doing this, we want to make, if I bring this card back in, we want to make the circle bigger and the square smaller. Because what I'm trying to do is create a matte layer that sits on here like this, okay? So let's do the circle first. I'm gonna go back to my resize button. And this is where I get, um, I flip between millimeters and inches, depending on what I'm working on. So I'm gonna go into my little spanner and I'm gonna go to millimeters just because it makes more sense in my head. I can imagine what a five and a half inch square looks like, but I want to be more accurate. I want to do millimeter increments rather than 0.04 inches. That's when it gets a little, because I've got to remember numbers then. So I'm gonna make it, if I make it 10 millimeters bigger, it will give me a five millimeter border all the way around. So let's make that 99. like that. And then because the circle is smaller than the square, I can see the square around it. I can just tap the square now, she says, there you go. So the smaller shape is the one that's underneath and you can't get to it because the shape on top is bigger. If the shape on top is smaller, then you can get to it. It's just one of those things that you need to just work out. So 140, so I'm gonna make that 130. So I'm gonna make this 10 millimeters smaller. So that'll give me a really nice balanced shape. I don't need to realign them because it takes the central point and it makes it bigger from there. It doesn't go from the corner, it goes from the center. So it always makes it bigger from the center. So to move it, all I need to do is multiple select everything on the mat and press OK. I don't need to group it because I can just move it because both shapes are selected. OK, so I'm then going to unload my mat. And I'm going to choose a different colour of card from this lovely, lovely stash. I'm so excited for you to get your hands on this card. It's going to be lovely. And I'm going to do a lighter pink. So let's bring in this nice soft pink here. And we're going to put this on here. We're going to cut this out. And don't forget, you can re-watch this class over and over and over again on the Highlight Crafts YouTube channel. So if you get stuck and think, what did she say? I can't remember what she said. Just go back and watch it as many times as you like. I'm going to load this mat in. So remember, up to the rollers. Load mat. And then we're going to cut this out. So I'm going to press OK. I'm going to keep going until I get to the cut. It's processing that information. That's lit up. And then I press start. Simple as that. Do this one. And I think, if I'm really honest, um, I think the fact that I learnt the CM machine inside out with the pressures and the blade depths and the settings and everything else has made me more aware of how the machine works. So I know the auto blade on the SDX is like, oh, that would be amazing because I don't need to think about the pressure and the blade depth. But actually knowing how that blade works, for me personally, I find that I've got, I'm more comfortable with the machine because I know that Unless I put my pressure on nine and my blade on 12, it's not going to cut through that mat because it can't, because the blade can't go far enough through to cut through that mat. If I've got really high pressures and blade depths, absolutely it will because it's a really good blade. But that's actually a blade cutting through really dense plastic. So it tells you the quality of the blade. But I'm really pleased that I learnt the CM inside out because... I've got that knowledge and I think sometimes you have to learn all of it to then, even if you don't use it all, because you've got that knowledge of how it works and that's, that's kind of where we're going with these classes. You know, yes, how do I put a circle in the middle of a square card aperture? How do I make that happen? Well, I've got to think about, you know, using a circle inside a square and it's only by using your machine that you will, you know, become more familiar with this. I'm just going to pop that on there. I'm going to glue it down. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. That's better. And I'm just going to glue this down. Now I can see there that that machine is not meeting on that point there. It's a very old machine and it's had a lot of hammer. If you've ever got something like that, first of all, make sure that your, um, that your mat is sticky enough. 
And if it isn't, retack it with the stencil glue. And I've had people contact me recently and say, I've got a brand new mat and the card's still not sticking. Just retack it with stencil glue, just because it's a different adhesive. So I found that the adhesive on the mat, because it's almost embedded into the mat, is different to when you use um, the stencil glue because the stencil glue is tacky rather than sticky. It's a different tack and it makes a difference, especially when you're cutting something like grey board because you need that, you need that contra you need that really good grip so that as it's moving and the blade's moving backwards and forwards, it's not moving the grey board on the mat. But I can see here, this need, this machine needs a service because it's not meeting. And it could be the mat, but I doubt it because it's a new one. It's something to do, the rollers might have come a little bit loose. And it's within your, I think you get a two year warranty with the scan and cut. So yours might be out of date now but it's always worth just asking the question. And if you need any technical support from Brother, their email address is UK, so capital U, capital K, and then support with the capital S, but everything else lowercase. So UK support at capital S for scan and cut. So scan and cut, which is scan N, Cut .eu. So it's the UK support line within the EU and somebody will get back to you. You need to give them as much information as possible. And if you think that they're, you know, if you if it helps at all, and it, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, then copy me in on the email, which is just mel at highlightcrafts.com. And then if they're not coming back to you, I can chase them up a bit. Because I have a man. I have a man that can occasionally sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but you know it is what it is right so the next thing I want to do is do another layer but I don't want that distance to be as wide okay so we do exactly the same thing and it's worth doing this just do a few layers don't think all right I've done that just keep practicing okay because the more you do it the more repetitive it is and actually when you look at the buttons that are on your scan and cut there aren't that many and you once you know what they are and how you use them it's repetitive. I mean, if I had, to, when I'm writing up instructions, especially when I'm teaching you how to make your own files from the basic shapes and I'm writing up instructions, if I had a pound for every time I type multiple select everything on the mat and align centrally vertically and centrally horizontally, I would never need to work a day again in my life. I could just craft forever. Um, but it's, it's just, it's understanding what those buttons do. And once you understand that, it's then about getting the most out of them. And that's what we're going to do in these classes. So using my back arrow to get back to a workable mat. And a workable mat is when I've got options to resize it, do all the other things that you can do with it. So remember, we hadn't grouped this one. So I just used my select arrow. So this time I'm going to make that. Let's go. I want it two millimeters. I want it two millimeters wider. So I want two millimeters at the top, two millimeters at the bottom. So I'm going to increase that by four mil. And then I'm going to press OK. I'm going to use my select arrow to get to my square. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to reduce that by four. And now I can cut that out of a different colour. So what shall we use? I think we might go for a little bit of dark purple on here. I think that might be quite nice. Oh, I love that colour. It's like a chocolate box colour. It's that wrapper. Beautiful cardstock. <laughs> so happy we're getting this in. Right, so let me load this in. Let's cut this. And let's press OK and cut and start. Now I'll do this one. Tell you something as well, a little tip. If you have got an SDX and a CM, you see how it's not miss it's hit not hitting there, it's not meeting there. That needs to go back to brother and get looked at.
but it is a very old machine to be fair. So I'm just going to pull that off. If that's happening and it's not meeting, that's really frustrating. So you need to contact brother and ask them what to do about it. Unfortunately, if it's out of warranty, they might not be able to do a lot. Well, they'll be able to do it um, if they can still get the parts, but they'll charge you for it. You can see there, that's really annoying. Next time we do this, we're getting a different machine out because that will drive me crazy. And it's just because, and it's not the mat because the mat is definitely sticky enough and it's definitely not the card. It might be just one of these rollers that needs tightening up. It might just be moving slightly, but like I said, we've had this probably six years and it's hammered. This is one of the old ones from my hub, so you can imagine how many different things it's cut. Right, so to now create just a really thin, so almost like, in fact, I'm going to do it differently than we did the SDX class because I want to show you um, how to create kind of foam mats and layers. So let's start with a piece of purple card and let's just do a, let's do a square because we can. All right, so let's just get rid of this and let's bring on a square. And let's just make it, I don't know, 125 mil. Set that on the mat. So I'm going to cut that out first. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy though because it's not going to meet, but it'll have to be what it'll have to be for now. So I'm just going to cut this like that. A question from Betty. Yep. Um, so when you're cleaning your mat, when you're retacking your mat, you need to clean it first. It's a good, it's a good idea. And all I do to clean my mat, that is going to drive me crazy that that's not meeting at the bottom. I can't do anything about it right now. Drive the bonkers. Is take your card off and you will get fibres on here. I've got some that look like they're completely coated. Get yourself one of these. Use your discount code if you haven't got one. Get one of these. This is the best thing. So yes, you'll still use this for getting really fine things off, like really fine frames. But for general cleaning, you want this. It just picks up more. They've chamfered it. I took them a, uh, like a, uh, it was actually a metal one from Dreamweaver stencils. That's how long ago I had it. I said, I need you to do something that's chamfered that comes down to a point. And just literally scrape off any excess if it's really really bad like gray board full of gray board bad soak it in some warm soapy water for a few minutes like that water penetrate into all those fibers and while it's wet scrape it off and then leave it to air dry okay and then retack it so it depends on how bad the mat is but i would always use this and just give it a scrape just before you retack it because otherwise what you'll end up with is a mat that's got bumps in it and as your blade hits that bump, it can damage the cut. So you just, or it could damage your blade. So you just need to be, look after your mats. And in between, make sure you put the plastic on because it is plastic and it's sticky. It attracts dust, embossing powder, glitter, dog hair, cat hair, all of the above. So just be careful with that. Right, what were we doing? I was showing you foam matting and layering, wasn't I? So I'm going to go in and find a really nice, fine, Hey, Lilac, because I've got all these colours now. And all this card that we're using, you're going to use every little last scrap of it because you can scan it in. So you can scan in all the bits that are left over and position letters or flowers or leaves or whatever it is on all those little scraps and you don't have a bit box anymore because you use all your card up. So economical, absolutely. And I do that all the time, right down to the little last bit of a piece of grey board. The other day I was like, can I just get a little more, one more roof tile out of that? And I managed it. Right, so from here, we're just going to make some smaller squares. So we know that that's the one that we've cut out of our darkest colour. So let's now just go in and let's make that 115 mil. Oh, that was quick. 115 mil. Okay. And then we'll duplicate it. So we'll ask it to do, let's ask it to do four. Okay, so I've got four squares. So I've got the one that I'm starting with. Then I'm going to make that one slightly smaller. And I'm not worrying about how small it is. I am literally just going to make them smaller each time. 
and then we'll take that one and we'll make that even smaller still and we'll make that one a few mil less than that and this is a really cool way of saving your card of not wasting card i'm just going to make that one a little bit smaller as well so i'm going to align all of them together all right and then it's going to cut them in lots of frames so i'm going to multiple select everything that's on the mat and press ok then i go to my directional arrow buttons which accesses my alignment function and I'm going to align it centrally vertically, centrally horizontally, press OK, and I'm just going to move this up here or anywhere because I haven't grouped it yet, I've just selected everything. And I'm just going to pop that there and then I'm going to ask it to cut it out. And this is a cool technique that I picked up when I went on a scrapbook course in the States. And it's kind of a little bit of a, an illusion because it looks like you've done lots of mats and layers, but actually it's just using frames. So you're saving. I know you can gut card and you can take the middle out of a piece of card, but it actually weakens the center. Doing it this way is really cool because it looks like you've got dark purple light, dark light, and you haven't. It's a really cool little tip for saving you on cardstock as well, which is good. I need to get this machine. I know what's wrong. One of the rollers isn't tight enough and it's move, the mat's moving slightly. I know exactly what it is because I've had it on one of my machines before. So as that roller just needs to tighten in a little bit, get a screwdriver out tomorrow morning and do that. Because that will drive me crazy. Right, so what we've got now is we've got frames. So we've got shapes in shapes. So I've got a square and I've got a wider frame and then I've got two narrower frames so if we bring this back in if we pop that on there and I glued that down so I'm gonna glue it down just so that you can see and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in each just a tiny bit because I want to get this back off after I should have got a tape runner so if I put that on there now from a distance it looks like you've got a layer of purple then a layer of a light one and then a layer of dark one so it looks like you've got you've matted a layer three times but actually you've just done one with a frame if you then take these and do the same with this now when you're getting fine frames off your mat i want you to use this spatula and it comes with your machine i want you to slide it up like that and then follow it around on the mat don't be tempted just to grab it and pull it off because if you're working on something really fine it's not too bad with a square but with a circle it can knock it can knock the shape out slightly so literally take it off there and then that can go onto there like that so i'm going to stick this one down and i'm going to just go right the way along stick this down properly this time right the way along there and then right the way up there like that so I'm going to pop that onto there and again you start to get that look of that illusion of foam matting and layering because even from here it looks like if you press that down firmly it looks like you've got dark purple light purple dark purple but it's just a frame and then we can go in with this one and again I'm just sliding this along my mat like this so I'm not pulling at that shape until it naturally wants to come away and there'll always be you know your mats will never last as long as you want them to last because you want them to last forever using the right blade depth and pressure really helps um, because every time you cut into your mat if you imagine what your die cutting plate looks like it's full of scratches isn't it and that's because the die is cut into that plastic it's the same with this but you're working on a mat so eventually you can retack it you know keep retacking it and retacking it but eventually your mat will feel floppy and it'll feel like it's got that many cuts in it that it's weakened the actual plastic and it tends to happen more in the middle you'll feel it just start to, you'll, it just feels like it's gone really floppy that's when you need to change your mat 
because no amount of glue is going to make that better. But now if you look at that, it looks like you've got dark purple, light purple, dark purple, light purple, dark purple, but it's just a frame. So being able to be that accurate with your measurements and creating really fine frames will save you a fortune in card because nobody would ever know that that was until you get right up close, you wouldn't know that that wasn't just one with two frames. And then you've still got all this lot left over from that piece of card because it drives me crazy when doing all this matting and layering and on TV, you have to just do it because it's quicker. But all that card that gets wasted just drives me crazy. And then you can start to do this bit as well. And then that could go back in there and all that kind of thing can start to, to come from there. Where are we at? Five minutes. I haven't got much time, have I really? Right, so seven minutes. Oh, okay. Right, so like two minutes makes all the difference. Um, if you want to put an aperture inside a shaped card, this is a different process, okay? And the reason for that is because we need to weld two shapes together. So like we did last month where we welded the scallop circle and we made a card. I'm going to do that again and ask it to do three this time. So I'm going to weld that to that. Now, if I put the circle aperture inside there first, which makes more sense because then I can just do that and I can just weld it together and I've got my shape card with my aperture. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that because again, when you put a circle on top of a shape, it puts it on top. It doesn't punch it through. And when you're welding, if you've got three shapes, all those three shapes need to overlap at some point because otherwise it can't weld them. It's like gluing. So you've got three pieces of card. You can't glue those three pieces together without overlapping them. That's what welding is like. So you need to weld your shapes to make your card first okay and then you put the circle in so we've got these two and they're overlapped so I'm going to make sure that one of those is selected and then I'm going to go to my access other screens we're going to multiple select part of the mat because we don't want that included we're going to press okay and this is what we did last month we're going to weld it okay so it's telling me it's okay to weld but it's irreversible so I'm do that then I can put the circle in the middle of here. So I can add, go back in, scroll down until I get the circle, make the circle smaller so it fits, and then put that inside there. So we're going to put that in the middle there. So we're going to make sure one of these is selected. Then you multiple select part of the mat, drag over that, and we're going to align that circle by going to our directional arrows and our alignment function and align it centrally vertically and centrally horizontally. Then we're going to press group because we need to group that together. And now we can put that over there. And the easiest way to do it is to drag it over here, bring that over there like that, ungroup it and tap the screen. Use your select arrows to access that single scallop circle and pop that in the bin. And now you've got your aperture in the middle of a shaped card. You need to weld the shapes first before you then put the circle over the top. Now, in Canvas Workspace, which we will come to, might be a few months away, but we will get there, there is um, a button called Divide. And I don't know why it's called Divide, because that doesn't make sense in my head. But what it does, in my head, it's a digital punch. So if I've got that scallop circle with the plain circle over the, on top of it, when I click divide, it punches that circle through that scallop circle. And, when I th and then it sees it as a frame. And when it sees it as a frame, it's one shape. It's not a circle sat on top of a scallop circle anymore. It's a scallop circle with the circle cut out of the middle of it. So it sees it as one shape then you can weld it, but you have to divide it first. So there's always a way around it. There's nothing, I don't think there's anything that I've found apart from creating a semicircle that doesn't have the line. So literally just an arc basically, but we can work around that because I can get that done as a cutting file. So there are ways around it. 
but there's nothing that I thought I really want to make a 3D house with a slant sloping roof with all rich tiles on and I want to make it look perfect. There's nothing that I've come across that I can't do. And I've even been thinking about how you would get letters to go around a circle because I know on Silhouette there's a button that you click and it makes the word go around like that. So I'm working on that bit at the moment. And the more I use it, and I use it every day, literally, it's it's on non-stop in my house. Um, the more I start to think like the machine and the more you start to think like the machine, the more you'll get out of it. And this is about... I've asked you to spend a considered amount of money on a machine and I don't want anybody leaving it in the box because it just it just makes me really sad because it's brilliant. It absolutely is, I would say, the best craft tool that I've ever owned and I've owned a lot of craft tools in 35 years. But this just keeps going because once you understand how it sees things and how it thinks, which I do, we can make it do all sorts of amazing things. And we can take, a, I don't know, a club, like a club black out of a pack of playing cards and we can make it into a flower. We can do all these things. We do rosettes on it. So all that concertina work you can do on here. There's so much potential sitting in that cupboard or in that box or on that shelf that I want you to get. And it's, it is a brilliant machine. So please keep coming back month after month you might already know some of it you might not know any of it you might need to go back and re-watch it over and over again doesn't matter doesn't matter how you learn it I just want you to learn it because it does become second nature and the great thing about this is that while this is doing all the boring bit you can be crafting because you don't have to wait for a plate to come out the back and then unload it it doesn't drop on the floor you literally you're crafting while that's doing all the work. Thousands and thousands and thousands of cuts I've done on my machine and it's all done. And my husband will come in and he's like, that machine's just working by itself. I'm like, yeah, because I've asked it to do what I'm, what it's doing. But do you not need to sit and watch it? I'm like, why do I need to sit and watch it? <laughs> I can be crafting while it's doing that. And it is really good. And even going back to things now like, um, like the foiling kit, I'm now thinking, right, we've got the foiling kit. So all the detail files that come with the reflections for two Red Robins USBs, we can now draw those with the foil onto the reflection before we cut it out. And then it will cut it out and it'll be foiled. Why would we not want to do that? And that's the great thing about it. That's where you can get to. You start to think about more and more and you'll walk around and you'll go, I can do that. I'm just going to cut. Walking around the garden centre the other day, Mick said, oh, that's a nice unit. I went, yeah, I can make that. I'm just going to cut. It's like it's a craft storage box. I'm like, I know I can make it. I'm just gonna cut because it's just thinking in shapes, and everything in the world is made up of shapes. So I want you to practice that. So I want you to practice making an aperture card with the matte layers that go on top of it, and then I want you to practice making a shaped card with an aperture in the front. And then next month we'll go on to the next step. And we'll build it up slowly and practice it. Don't think, oh, yes, you'll not know if I don't do it. Ways of noting these things. <laughs> but I please practice it because I don't mind working till whatever time at night. It doesn't make any difference to me because I do it anyway. But I really want you to get the most out of your machine. That's why we're doing it. And it's not about buying more USBs and buying more mats and all the rest of it. There is that side of it because we are a business. But... I want you to make the most of your machine. I don't want three, four, five hundred pounds of the machine sat in a box in a cupboard. That makes me sad. So let's get them out and let's start using them. And you will look back and go, I wish I'd done this years ago because it is blinking brilliant. And especially when now the next USB that I'm working on now is the second made from the memory where you create your own files on this machine. A little bit of help in Canvas now and again. And you make those amazing things that we used to make with Cutting Craftorium. But I'm teaching you how to do it from the basic shapes that are in the machine. And just so that you know, we will always, always make sure that every single machine you can do those projects with. It's not a case of, oh, no, the CM is not important anymore. It absolutely is. It doesn't matter whether you bought it on the first day or whether you bought it last week. Absolutely, we're going to make sure that those projects work for you, which is great. So thank you so much for joining me this evening. It's been great fun. 
um, don't forget your code, which is brother10. You might as well get 10% off your accessories while you're there. If you are a Two Red Robins member, then you will get another 10% off because that's part of your club membership. And if you spend over £25 as a club member, you get free postage. So it might be worth thinking about joining it. I think it's £24 for the year, but you get 10% off. That's the minimum that you get off. I would say 99% of the stuff that's on our website. So it's a really great little club. You get like previews and discounts and all proper members events. A bit like the Crate and Craft Club, but really good. <laughs> no, the Crate and Craft Club's good, but this is a little bit better. So thank you again, once again. Go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Get your skull and cuts out and please practice. Please, please. And it will be on YouTube tomorrow if you want to watch it again. All right, so Highlight Crafts YouTube channel. Thank you, everybody. Lots of love. See you soon.